Welcome to Grace Canada's Investors Briefing. I am Don Webby, Group Chief Executive Officer. With me is Frank James, Group Chief Financial Officer. We welcome all participants who have joined us via the internet for this audio conference. The briefing has been scheduled to run for 40 minutes. We'll use approximately 25 minutes to 30 minutes of this time for presentations, and then we'll be happy to take your questions uh, for the rest of the meeting. During the question and answer session, you are welcome to share your questions by emailing us at gkinvestor at gkco.com. Um, let me repeat that, gkinvestor at gkco.com. You may also call or send a text to our communication team at 876-809 one one two one or eight seven six eight oh nine zero four six four um, let me repeat those numbers eight seven six eight oh nine one one two one or eight seven six eight oh nine zero four six three once again welcome to our investor briefing for our auditor results for 2018 um, I will do a brief presentation, as I said earlier, and then our CFO, Frank James, will expand in terms of the numbers. 2018 was a good year for the Grace Kennedy Group. We had some challenges, but at the end of the year and going forward to 2019, I think we are a much stronger group going into 2019. Revenues for the group was 97.5 billion or 5.07 billion over 2017. Profits after tax was 5.6 billion or 871 million above 2017. And that translates to 18%. For information, as we look at the revenue segmentation by geography, 53% of our revenue was generated inside Jamaica and 47% outside of Jamaica. Remember, our global consumer group target is that we want 60% of our revenue outside of Jamaica and 40% inside Jamaica. This means that we are actually moving in the right direction. And this is not to say that we don't expect growth in both Jamaica and overseas, but we expect that our overseas market will be growing faster than our Jamaican market as it relates to revenue. What is pleasing about these results in terms of revenue, you'll recall a year or so ago, we had set ourselves so what we at the time described as a very ambitious target to be a hundred billion company in Jamaica, the first. Well, we are well on track. And in fact, I may be brave to say this afternoon to our investors that we believe that having set the target for 2022, we may in fact hit that target for 2019. This year, where the company could in fact produce 100 billion in revenue. You will also recall during our investors briefings of last year, that we spoke about the Grace Kennedy Group becoming a more efficient group, a more agile group, a more entrepreneurial group, and giving our subsidiaries more autonomy in terms of decision-making, agility. That exercise, uh, which we termed internally as Project Eagle, was completed in September of 2018. Um, it had associated with it a one-off cost of 236 million. And we believe that the payback for that cost would be less than a year. In fact, what we're saying is that having completed that exercise, we expect savings, significant savings for our 2019 numbers. So having said that, our focus on 2019 will not only be to continue to grow the revenues, as I said, 100 billion is within sight, but we are looking now at efficiency, focusing on sustainable significant increases in our profitability, cash generation, and also the Grace Kennedy dividend yield. We believe that we need to focus on those areas. 
profitability significant increases, generating more cash so we can pay out more dividends and increase our dividend yield. And in fact, we have a new dividend policy which was approved by the Grace Kennedy Board and Mr. Frank James um, will expand on that. Another positive for us for 2018 was the movement in our stock price, our share price, where it increased by 44.50%, which was above the market index. I should have mentioned in terms of the profitability numbers of 5.6 billion. There is a non-recurring um, gain in that number, and I will, Frank, in your presentation, I'll ask you to expand on that and the dividend policy. We were also very successful last year in terms of our acquisition strategy, which we clearly outlined that this is going to be one of our growth strategies for the Grace Kennedy Group by looking at acquisitions which fit into our mission and our vision. So we acquired C CSGK, acquired Globe um, Finance Company in Barbados which um, now makes us um, a 40% shareholder in the largest merchant bank in Barbados. What we found very interesting and very beneficial to the Grace Kennedy Group is that w when we acquired the company, the effective tax rate was 25%. After acquiring the company, the Prime Minister of Barbados, Honorable Mia Motley, reduced the tax rate from 25% to 3.7% for our company, which means that the return on investment is going to be significantly, significantly enhanced by that reduction from 25% to 3.7% tax rate, which is exceptionally good. We also merged um, our manufacturing plant in the USA with a company by the name of Majestic Foods, which was one of the patty producers in South Florida. So our patties, which were being produced by Majestic Foods, is now being produced by an associated company where we own 49%. Uh, listeners may be happy to know that our growth in the patties in the United States is actually 200%. That's the sort of growth that we're seeing with our patties now found in Walmart, Target, and, and most of the multiples are the major chains over there. Our jerk wings will also be produced at our own factory in the United States. And the initial feedback that, that we are getting is that the jerk wings is also performing exceptionally well. Another acquisition that we did was Catherine Speak. Um, Springwater, we believe that's extremely strategic for us. Uh, we did not have um, Grace Kennedy um, foods, we did not have a, a spring water as part of our portfolio. No, we no own 35% of, of Catherine's Peak here. For those of you who are seeing the camera, Mr. Cameraman, you can show the best water in Jamaica, please. Um, and Grace Kennedy Foods is now the exclusive distributor of Catherine's Peak. I'm happy to say that since the acquisition and the distribution by Grace Kennedy, um, the volume for Catherine's Peak has gone up year over year and over our expectations in terms of budget. You know, we speak a lot about investments and private sector investments, but I'm happy to say that Grace Kennedy, in terms of our capital budget for 2019, is 3.7 billion, 3.7 billion Jamaican dollars in new capital investments that we'll be making for 2019. This includes our effort again to become more efficient. We will include investments in software and new computer um, equipment. One of the game changing investments that we will be making for 2019 is that we are going to have a new logistics center in the United States, um, in New Jersey. And by all indications, that is going to make our US company more efficient in terms of the logistics is going to impact in, our ver in a very positive way our margin management strategy, our working capital strategy, and our distribution costs per, per unit. I believe that will be reflected certainly in our results for the USA 
business in 2020 and beyond. By the way, we are expecting to move into that new warehouse um, sometime in July. So we'll get some benefits for 2019. Also, those of you who are visitors to downtown Kingston, you'll see our new corporate headquarters, GKCHQ, is almost complete. In fact, we were hoping to moving, move in um, on April 1st. Um, I've been informed by our project manager that that has now been delayed for eight by to April 15th, um, but we are very happy of the progress that, that has been made. For information, um, we're going to have a, um, a retail center uh, in the building for Grace Kennedy. So you're going to have a Hilo Express. So those of you who work um, in downtown Kingston, you can stop by the building and pick up your, your groceries from Hilo. Uh, we're going to have our GK1, our money services, uh, as an agent branch for First Global Bank, our insurance, um, and, and, and Western Union. So colleagues, in summary, our strategy is sound, it's solid. The management team and the board, uh, we are executing well on it. And I really believe that 2019 is going to be an excellent year for the Grace Kennedy Group based on the strategies and the plans that we have in place. Again, growing our revenues, sustainable significant increases in profitability and cash generation and dividend yield will be our focus for 2019. I'm now going to ask Mr. James to speak to us a little bit more about the numbers and then we'll be happy to take some questions after. Frank, over to you. Well, thanks very much, Don. As Don indicated, we had our revenues up 5.5% or $5.1 billion. And this was driven by two of our core segments where we had growth in revenue. We had declines in banking and money services in terms of revenue. Our pre-tax profits were up just under 20%, 19.7% or $1.14 billion. And our net profits, as Don indicated, reached $5.6 billion, up over 18%. This drove an increase in our earnings per share of 22%, just over $5 per share. Now, Don mentioned that we had some non-recurring gains, and listeners will recall that in 2017, we had the successful acquisition of Consumer Brands Limited, which brought with it the Procter & Gamble portfolio, and we recognized a gain on that in 2017, as well as the liquidation of some non-operating subsidiaries. So we had total non-recurring gains of $455 million in 2017. In 2018, we also had a liquidation of a non-operating subsidiary, which resulted in a non-recurring gain of just over a billion dollars, $1.06 billion. And as Don mentioned, we had a successful acquisition of Globe Finance by Signia in Barbados, and that also resulted in a gain of $75 million on that acquisition. When we adjust for these gains and those non-recurring gains in 2017 and 2018, our profits or net profits would have been up 4.5% or $192 million. And that would have been driven by the performance three of three out of our four segments. Three of our four segments showed growth in profits, with money services showing a decline of 4%. And I'll speak to money services again a little later. In terms of our segment performance, the food segment had the, what gave the largest contribution to revenue growth, representing $4.5 billion of the $5.1 billion in growth, or a 6% growth with a 4% growth in profits for our food segment. Our domestic market, Jamaica, actually outperformed our international market in terms of revenue growth, growing at 10% versus 4% for our international markets. In Jamaica, we saw the good performance of Procter & Gamble portfolio and the Catherine's Peak spring water, which commenced in July 2018. But a lot of our key products, our core products, also performed well during the year, such as corned beef, where we saw a strong rebound in that. Vienna sausages and in our beverage line, Tropical Rhythms, also did well. All of these products delivered double-digit growth for the group in 2018. In our international markets, we saw all markets growing except UK, which declined due to the loss of a third-party brand, and Africa, where we are reassessing our business model. The largest growth in our international market actually came from our U.S. business, 
with growth in both the Grace and La Paix brands. Uh, Don mentioned our new products, and we're very proud of our new product innovations in those markets, both the Grace patties and jerk wings, which give opportunities for us to explore how these products can also be transported to other markets in which we operate. But our Canadian food business also did well, contributed meaningfully to the growth in revenue, and we see them continuing to do well in large retailers such as Walmarts, Loblaws, and Sobeys. Another driver of both revenue and profit for the group was our insurance segment, with revenues up 16%, or $939 million, and profits up 18%, or $101 million. Our Jamaican underwriter, GK Insurance, saw growth in its motor portfolio, its property portfolio, and uh, interestingly, our engineering portfolio. As we know, and those in Jamaica will know, there have been significant and are significant road infrastructure projects in Jamaica. And we are very pleased that we are one of the primary insurers on a number of these projects, which has generated the growth in our engineering portfolio. As would have been expected in the insurance business, we saw a decline in property claims, and this was largely due to the fact that we had hurricanes Irma and Maria in 2017. However, we have seen an increase in motor claims. Notwithstanding that, our profit still grew strong, driven by the revenue growth, which I spoke to earlier. In terms of our banking and investment segment, we saw revenue down 4%, but profits were up 11%. Um, in the case of banking and investments, First Global Bank was part of the impact on our revenue. As we saw interest rates coming down and combined with that decline in the loan portfolio, we saw that impacting our revenue and profits. We are very excited, however, about the prospects for FGB in 2019. In this age where banks are moving away from brick and mortar infrastructure, we think that FGB will be able to leverage technology very effectively to drive growth and we continue to push our financial inclusion strategy. The profit performance for the banking and investment segment was largely driven by our investment banking arm, GK Capital and GK Investments, which performed well, as well as Signia Financial in Barbados. In the case of money services, we saw revenue down 2% and profit down 4%. Uh, Jamaica and Trinidad were down in transaction volumes as we continue to enhance compliance measures which we are confident will benefit our customers and the business. We are also very pleased, however, with our Ghana market, which did very well and is an important market for us in money services and generally. Moving to the balance sheet, our total assets increased by 4%, or $5.2 billion, to $135 billion, just over a billion US dollars in assets driven by growth in cash and investments, uh, largely due to growth in deposits and liabilities at First Global Bank, as well as the profit generation for the group. Our inventory was also up, which is in line with the growth that we have been seeing in our foods business, particularly in Jamaica, as well as Don spoke about the M&A acquisition, so we saw investments in associates and joint ventures. Importantly, in 2018, we invested in our business with our capital expenditure of over $3.4 billion. A large part of this, of course, would have been our new corporate headquarters. And that corporate headquarters is going to also have significant benefit for, for us because it not only will result in us moving out of some rented space, but we will get significant benefits under the Urban Renewal Act. In 2017, we already recognized over $416 million in tax credits. And in 2018, we recognized another $428 million in tax credits. These tax credits are recognized when the construction is done. So we'll expect some more in 2019, um, but the significant portion would have been in 2017 and 2018. But we'll continue to feel the cash benefit of those tax credits over the next few years. We also saw the expansion of our distribution center, where we spent quite a bit of our capital expenditure there to accommodate the growth in our food business, which will also reduce our cost of outside storage. And very exciting in our domestic market is our renovation of our newly acquired Denby manufacturing facility, which will see us introducing new innovative products, both for the Jamaican and the international export markets. The growth in assets was offset by a reduction in the pension plan assets of $3 billion. I want to just spend a short while on that. The Institute of Chartered of Accountants of Jamaica annually determines the discount rate to be applied to pension funds in Jamaica by the actuaries. 
and in for 2018 there was a reduction in the discount rate of one percentage point that reduction results in the present value of our benefit obligations going up and therefore a net reduction in the pension asset reflected on the company this is a requirement under our international financial reporting standards and does not in any way reflect the performance of the pension fund in fact the return on the pension fund exceeded our benchmark for 2018. As such, the pension fund continues to remain very strong and with a meaningful surplus. On the liability side, we saw a growth of 7%, largely due to the growth in deposits and repo liabilities to fund the loan and investment portfolios of the bank. Our debt to equity ratio remains fairly modest at 37%, up slightly from 36.5%. I want to spend a little time on shareholder returns, which is very important for us as a group and an area that we have been focusing on. So as we grow our profits, we not only reinvest significantly in the group for growth, but we also return cash to our shareholders. And so in 2018, we declared dividends of $1.35 per stock unit, or over $1.3 billion paid out for 2018. This represented an increase of just under 20%, 19.5% over the prior period. And this is combined with the increase in the Grace Kennedy stock price, as Don mentioned, of 45% outpacing the JSE main index. In addition, what we have done is we have changed our dividend policy approved by the Grace Kennedy board in February of this year to increase the dividend payout to a minimum of 20% of net profit attributable to shareholders. This is up from the 15% in the previous dividend policy and reflects our intent to continue to grow our payout to our shareholders. We already have been above the 20%, and so we felt that this was in line. We're also looking at increasing our dividend frequency from three to four. So that change was also approved by the board to pay out four times a year instead of three times per year. While we saw a significant increase in the share price for 2018, we still see upside for the Grace Kennedy stock as our price to book is at approximately 1.4 times with market multiples ranging in the three to four times, and our price earnings multiple at 12.6 times, with market multiples in the range of 18 to 19 times. So we still believe there is good upside for the Grace Kennedy stock. Our equity position continues to be strong, notwithstanding a slight reduction in our equity of 1.4%, ending the year at $44.6 billion. The reduction was primarily due to the implementation of IFRS 9 and 15, which reduced shareholders' equity at the start of the year by just under $1 billion. Don, those are the highlights. Thank you very much, Frank. That was very, very comprehensive. Now, can we ask if there are any questions? OK, we have a few here. Um, the first one is about HILO and the current issues or status of the roadworks. So, um, so we have um, two high-low stores that were affected. Uh, one is being affected by, by the roadworks. The first one was our Barbican high-low store um, that was affected last year primarily, where our revenues dipped as much as 30% less than the previous year. Um, I'm, I'm happy to say with the roadworks no complete uh, we are ahead of where we were before. So that is good news. Um, Manor Park, um, as you know, there's a lot of road work being done by Constant Spring. Um, while we have not seen um, a drop in revenue at this point in time, it is expected that, that it will have an impact on our Manor Park store. What we'll be doing to be proactive in terms of, of customer uh, satisfaction is that we're going to try and set up a, a delivery service where your groceries um, will be delivered to your home. We're just trying to work out the final logistics now, um, but I can assure you it will be done in short order. Um, other question, um, what is happening in Africa in terms of revenue? Um, uh, listeners and the investment public will recall at the last AGM I shared with our shareholders that we are revisiting the business model for Africa, specifically Ghana. 
So last year, 2018, we really spent a lot of time looking at the strategy and the business model for Africa. Where we ended up is that having our own distribution company with all of that infrastructure and costs was not the right business model to have. So we decided that we were going to um, change that model to one where we appoint a third party distributor to distribute our products. Uh, I'm happy to say that we have found what we consider to be a very good partner for, for Grace Kennedy in Ghana and we have now resumed um, and will build on our distribution arrangement with that new partner. So in the accounts um, for 2018, yes, you'll see a, a fall off in revenues. I think it's from about 125 to 29 million, although in the scheme of things, that's insignificant um, to the Grace Kennedy Group, but I've set some targets for my team and I expect that 29 million um, to grow with this new arrangement that we have in place. Uh, in, in, the, in your report, you noted that, um, handwriting is terrible, <laughs> you, <laughs> noted <that> the <laughs> you noted that the UK, the UK revenue fell off. Um, what is the reason? And you specifically mentioned nourishment. Okay, so UK, the revenue fell off primarily for two reasons. The first one is that we lost um, one of our principles, YOWS, which was really um, for our subsidiary, Chado. It's a, it was an oriental brand, and the owners of that brand um, decided that they want to use another distributor. What have we done to replace that revenue? We own our own oriental brand in the United Kingdom. Um, the name of the brand is Silk Road. We have relaunched that brand, and I must say, um, early indications are that it is performing well. The other thing, the other strategy that we did, we actually um, got another um, oriental brand in terms of our principal representation, which is commonly referred to as, uh, as LKK, Lecom Key, which is a much larger brand than, than, than yours, but we did not get it on an exclusive basis as we had with yours. I believe, however, um, having received that, 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 that arrangement with LKK, and this is for the independent ethnic retail sector, which is really our forte, our expertise in the UK, I believe that the potential of LKK to fully replace um, yours, along with our own silk, um, our own Silk Road brand, um, is very possible, and I may go as far as it's very, very likely that that will happen within another year or two. So, in terms of UK and the revenue, um, yours, Silk Road, um, our own brand, and LKK. The other challenge that we had last year terms of revenue for the UK was our brand Nourishment, which is a milk-based drink. Uh, and it's actually one of the largest um, brands that the Grace Kennedy Group own in its entire group. We have done significant amount of market research in terms of its packaging, its labeling. Uh, we have met with our customers, the cash and carries, the multiples, etc. And we're basically looking at what I would describe as refreshing the packaging of the product. And that's what the surveys and the feedback um, has been saying to us. And that is now in train. The, the fall off in revenue um, has now stopped. And in fact, we are noticing for the first two months of 2019 um, an increase in the revenue for nourishment. So we expect that nourishment will have um, with the strategies that we're implementing. We expect that it will have a, a decent year for 2019 and we're looking forward to giving further growth um, beyond. We get this question every investor's briefing. I, I'm Frank, I'm going to ask you to start. How does GK predict the Jamaican dollar? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
you go. <laughs> All right, thanks very much, Don. I, what I would say is that we have noted as a group with concern the level of volatility in the exchange rate. And we think for effective planning, it's important that we have greater stability in the exchange rate. While we appreciate the importance of inflation targeting and the need to focus on that, there's also a need from the private sector perspective that we are able to plan effectively. So having the currency move from $7 in one month in one direction and move $8 in the other month in another direction really makes planning or pricing or purchasing a very difficult activity. And it's important that we have that level of stability if we're going to be able to effectively plan our business. That said, the Grace Kennedy Group is fortunate that we have a very effective natural hedge because as an importer of Finish, as an importer of raw material, as an exporter of finished goods, we have a natural hedge. And where it becomes necessary, then we also look at how we use financial hedges. But as a group, we are a net seller into the market, and we have a natural hedge in the group based on our export sales. Yeah, I, I think um, Frank is, is spot on. Um, predictability. You know, when you have volatility of an exchange rate, whether in either direction, it, it, it's a concern. It makes difficult the business environment, uh, both from a food point of view and from a financial services point, point of view. Usually, when we talk about predictability, uh, we look at the differential in inflation rate between our major trading partners and use that inflation, differential in inflation rate as more or less as a proxy for where the rate should be or the, the right value for um, the foreign exchange rate. And we have noticed um, throughout the Grace Kennedy Group um, that, uh, that, that that band has been exceeded a number of times in either direction. So pre Frank is right. Predictability is the key. Having said that, um, Grace Kennedy, we are actually net sellers of foreign exchange in the market through our Western Union business and our export business of, of food. So um, the finance folks describe it as a natural hedge, but I think it, you know, it's, it's really a big, big strength for the group um, when you're actually having satisfied all your foreign exchange needs. You're selling significant amount of foreign exchange in the market. And if I may say so, um, I think the Jamaican economy um, needs more exporters to earn more foreign exchange. And then that predictability that we mentioned earlier will become natural. Um, Frank, there's a question here for you. Uh, what kind of savings does the group anticipate from the new head office, specifically the Urban Renewal Tax Relief Act? Right. Thanks, thanks, John. So the benefit under the Urban Renewal Act comes in a number of ways. We actually get one third of the capital expenditure, approved capital expenditure as a tax credit. And so in 2017, we benefited by to the tune of 416 million. In 2018, 428 million. These benefits are realized in the year of construction. And as Don indicated, we're planning to move in in this year. So we would see a small amount in this year. Uh, however, we'll continue to benefit from the, the cash effect of that through to 2026. Um, we also will benefit from interest, from a lower interest rate on the construction cost because the interest on those bonds that we issue under the Urban Renewal Act is also tax free to the investor. In addition to that, our offices in New Kingston that are rented space, we will be coming out of those offices and moving into this building and we'll save on that rental. And under the Urban Renewal Act, we also get the rental income in the building also has a tax benefit to the group. Okay, um, this is a final question for the afternoon. Um, uh, let's paraphrase it. Uh, the, 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 the ban on single-use packaging bags in 2019. L let, let me say that um, Grace Kennedy fully, fully support um, the ban on single-use packaging bags. What is the impact on the group? Um, in the short term, our distribution business, um, we have never used um, plastic bags. High-low, um, yes, but we started to convert to the 
reusable bags even before the official ban of the of the of the plastic. We are now um, using the reusable bags and the paper bags. I must confess, however, that at high low we underestimated the demand of the reusable bags and the paper bags. So at times the supermarket um, and especially in Montego Bay, we were short on some of the bags. And actually, we had to be packing some of the, our customers' groceries in, in plastic, in, in boxes, of which I do apologize. One of the things that I have found is that the reusable bags are not being carried back to the supermarket. And um, I think we should have a reminder and start a promotion that you need to really take back your reusable bags to the supermarket because that's why they are there. So um, we fully, fully support it. Um, it should have been done earlier. Our execution at Grace Kennedy in terms of high low was not 100%. Uh, we apologize for that. But the feedback that I've been getting from my executives from high low is that we are doing a much better job um, at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, um, this brings today's briefing to an end. Um, thank you for your time and your participation. I, I noticed that the questions weren't as much as the quarterly investors briefing, but I guess um, with the auditing results and there's quite a bit of media already on our results, uh, maybe that's the reason why. Um, as of tomorrow, a link of today's broadcast will be available on our corporate website, uh, www.gracekennedy.com. And if you have any additional questions, please submit them to gkinvestor at gkco.com. Um, let me say, um, we value your feedback on the streaming experience and any suggestions you may have as how to improve um, will be happy to hear and act on it. Or if there's any suggestions that you have in how Grace Kennedy can interact um, with our investment community, our shareholders, I would really, really also appreciate that feedback. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much again and have a good evening. Thank you.